Why do people say www when World Wide Web uses six less syllables? Pow! So, today I am going to prove the Euler equation. How to prove it, you ask? Well, it all starts off with your calculator. When you do uh, calculations involving trig functions, so sine and cos, your calculator doesn't actually know the values. It doesn't actually have them memorised. It actually uses an approximation. And the approximation it uses is called the Taylor series. And in my formula booklet, I have got a Taylor series for several different things. I've got it for E, I've got it for sine, I've got it for cos. I know you can't see it, but I'm going to be writing out the important bits. So that's cool. So the way the Taylor series works, now this is for e to the x. You get 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, etc. Right? Um, and it goes on forever because each term gets smaller. So each term gets you slightly closer to the answer. Here we have the first six terms. I'm not going to need more than six terms for this, luckily. Because a lot of this proof is going to be assumed. Next. The next thing you need to know is that i is the square root of minus 1. If you square a positive number, you get a positive number, and if you square a negative number, you still get a positive number. So, if you ever find yourself with a square root of a negative number, you have problems. So, someone invented i, which isn't a real number, it is an imaginary number, and that's what you need to know right now. So if we repeat this, but using ix instead of x, we get this. And now you see why I only use six terms, because it's filling that sheet of A4 paper. As I said, i equals the root of minus 1. So i squared equals minus 1, which means that terms can be simplified down. For example, that i squared x squared is going to become minus x squared. So I'm going to write that out again, but I'm going to sort out all the i's. So this becomes this which is a little tiny bit easier to deal with. And what we're going to do now is we're going to put into brackets the parts that have got an I in them and the parts that don't have an I in them. And all the parts that do have an I in them, we're going to put the I on the outside of the brackets. And you're going to see why in a minute. This just becomes this, which actually looks easier again. So you can see that there's a kind of pattern happening here. And my formula booklet, as I mentioned, the Taylor expansions for sine and for cosine. And this is the part where it gets clever because, firstly, this series equals cos x, and secondly, this series equals sine x, which means that we can now rewrite this as this. Now, if you remember, what we started out trying to prove, you'll see that it doesn't actually have an x in it, it has a pi instead. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this one and put a pi where the x was. So this becomes this. Now the question is, how well do you know your sine and cosine graphs? Is that which means that, congratulations, now you can prove the Euler equation and prove to all your non mathy friends that you know random stuff. Thank you for watching and I'll see you around guys. I promise that my next video will be less mathy for those of you who aren't geeks like me. I can't even do it on a cheat. I'm, I'm bouncing up my chin. <sighs>